Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Vagus Nerve Stimulation, VNS, for Depression, Introduction. Vagus nerve stimulation is a procedure sometimes used to treat the symptoms of depression. When the vagus nerve is stimulated, electrical impulses are sent into the brain through the vagus nerve. These electric impulses improve the mood of some patients. If other treatments for depression have failed, your healthcare provider may recommend vagus nerve stimulation, which is also known as VNS. This program will help you better understand the VNS procedure. It discusses when it is recommended, its alternative treatments, the surgery, its risks and benefits, and what to expect after surgery. The vagus nerves. The brain is the control center of the body. It controls the five senses as well as the ability to move, think, and speak. A network of nerves carries messages back and forth between the brain and the rest of the body. These nerves run from the brainstem through the neck and down to each side of the chest and abdomen. One such nerve is the vagus nerve. There is one vagus nerve on each side of the body. Each nerve goes from the brainstem to the neck down to the chest and abdomen. The vagus nerve is also known as the tenth nerve. The vagus nerves carry messages from the brain to the body's major organs, the heart, Lungs and intestines all receive messages from the brain through the vagus nerves. The vagus nerves also send messages that control mood, sleep, and other important functions. Vagus nerve stimulation, VNS. Vagus nerve stimulation, also known as VNS, is used to treat depression when other treatments have failed. A device that is surgically placed in the upper left side of your chest sends electrical impulses to the vagus nerve. The device is called a pulse generator. The electrical impulses travel through a lead wire. The lead wire is connected to the pulse generator. The lead wire is attached to the left side vagus nerve in the neck. The stimulation of the vagus nerve with these electrical impulses has been shown to treat the symptoms of depression. Some patients report improvement in mood. It may take 6 to 12 months to see at least some improvement in symptoms. The mechanism that explains why VNS works for some patients is not known. Research is still ongoing to explain the exact reasons. It may be due to the pulses altering certain neurotransmitters or brain chemicals which control mood. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Alternative Treatments VNS is recommended only when other regular treatments for depression have failed. Regular exercise, healthy diet, and stable relationships are all helpful in keeping stress low. Making lifestyle changes also help reduce depression symptoms. Counseling and psychotherapy can be helpful in treating mild cases of depression. They may also be used to treat more advanced cases along with prescribed medications. Medications to fix neurotransmitter imbalances are now available. Taking them regularly is important. It may take weeks before depression medications work. Therefore, it is important to keep taking them. Do not get discouraged if you don't notice results immediately. Most antidepressants are not addictive, but they should not be stopped all at once unless a healthcare provider says to do so. Electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, is useful in patients with severe depression and who are slow to respond to medications. Several sessions of ECT are usually needed to help. ECT helps restore the balance of neurotransmitters by causing the brain to have a seizure. This seizure is brief and lasts only about 30 seconds. 
ECT is done under general anesthesia and muscle relaxation. Patients do not shake uncontrollably as depicted in some movies. Patients feel no pain or discomfort during ECT. Procedure The procedure to place the pulse generator and lead wire is usually done under general anesthesia. Sometimes local anesthesia may be used instead. You may be able to go home the same day as the operation. Sometimes patients may need to stay overnight in the hospital. Ask your healthcare provider whether you will have to stay in the hospital. Two small incisions are made by the surgeon. One incision is made in the neck to access the vagus nerve. The other incision may be done in the chest or armpit to place the device. After the device is placed, the lead wire is guided up under the skin to the neck. The lead wire is then wrapped around the vagus nerve. Sometimes the device is turned on immediately after surgery. Other times the device may be turned on later during a checkup visit. The device is powered by a battery that lasts around 6 to 10 years. Another simpler surgery must be done to replace the battery when it dies. Activating the VNS device Sometimes the device is turned on immediately after surgery. Other times the device may be turned on later during a checkup visit to your healthcare provider. The stimulation of the vagus nerve is usually started at a low level. The level may be slowly increased by your healthcare provider. This depends on your symptoms. About every five minutes, the pulse generator will send electrical pulses to the vagus nerve. These pulses last about 30 seconds. The settings may be adjusted. You will probably not feel anything when the pulses are being sent to the vagus nerve, but it may cause coughing or a hoarse voice when the nerve is being stimulated. The device can be turned off by placing a special magnetic device over the chest where the pulse generator is implanted. Sometimes a person may turn off the device when exercising so it does not interfere with breathing. The device can also be turned off if the side effects become too much to handle. Removing the magnetic device turns the device back on. Risks and Complications This procedure is safe, but there are several possible risks and complications. These are unlikely, but they are possible. You need to know about the risks and complications just in case they happen. By being informed, you may be able to help your healthcare provider detect complications early. The risks and complications include those related to anesthesia, surgery in general, this specific surgery, the implanted device. Risks of general anesthesia include cut lips and chipped teeth, headache, nausea or vomiting, problems urinating, sore throat. More serious risks of general anesthesia include heart attacks, lung infections, strokes. Your anesthesiologist will discuss these risks with you and ask if you are allergic to certain medications. Blood clots in the legs can happen due to inactivity during and after the surgery. These usually show up a few days after surgery. They cause the leg to swell and hurt. Blood clots can become dislodged from the leg and go to the lungs where they can cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and death. It is extremely important to let your healthcare provider know if any of these symptoms happen. Sometimes the shortness of breath can happen without warning. Getting out of bed shortly after surgery may help decrease the risk of complications caused by blood clots. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include the following. 1. Infection, deep or at the skin level. 2. Bleeding, either during or after the operation. 3. Skin scars that may be painful or ugly. Other risks and complications are related specifically to this surgery. These are rare, but it is important to know about them. The implanted device may come loose after surgery. It may also move around or malfunction. This may require additional surgery to correct. Rarely, vagus nerve stimulation may cause suicidal thoughts or worsening depression in some people. Make sure to tell your healthcare provider if you or a loved one has suicidal thoughts.
Another possible risk is vocal cord paralysis. This is usually temporary. While unlikely, there is also the possibility that the device will not improve symptoms. Most people who are treated with vagus nerve stimulation see at least some improvement over time. Side effects from the actual stimulation are usually mild and go away when the stimulation is turned off. The stimulation can also be adjusted by your healthcare provider, so the side effects are eliminated or lessened. Since VNS is a relatively new treatment option, long-term side effects are not known. After surgery Your healthcare provider will give you instructions on taking care of yourself at home. You should not lift objects that weigh more than 5 pounds. It is normal to have the following side effects. Hoarseness and other changes in your voice. Neck or throat pain. Tingling sensation in the skin. Other common side effects include cough or trouble swallowing, pain or muscle spasms in the chest, difficulty breathing, most often while exercising. Over time, the side effects of vagus nerve stimulation often get better, but sometimes the side effects continue until vagus nerve stimulation is stopped. Your healthcare provider can adjust the setting on your device to reduce the side effects. The device can also be shut off either for a short time, such as during exercise, or permanently if the side effects are too bothersome. You will need to have regular checkups with your healthcare provider after the device is implanted. During these visits, your healthcare provider will make sure the device is working properly. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Vagus nerve stimulation, or VNS, is a treatment that uses an implant to send electrical impulses to the vagus nerve. These nerves run from the brainstem through the neck and down to each side of the chest and abdomen. Each person has one left and one right vagus nerve. When the vagus nerve is stimulated, electrical impulses are sent into the brain through the vagus nerve. These electric impulses improve the mood of some patients. VNS is recommended only when other regular treatments for depression have failed. The procedure to place the pulse generator and lead wire is usually done under general anesthesia. One incision is made in the neck to access the vagus nerve. The other incision may be done in the chest or armpit to place the device. After the device is placed, the lead wire is guided up under the skin to the neck. The lead wire is then wrapped around the vagus nerve. Sometimes the device is turned on immediately after surgery. Other times the device may be turned on later during a checkup visit. The stimulation of the vagus nerve is usually started at a low level. The level may be slowly increased by your healthcare provider. Your healthcare provider will give you instructions on taking care of yourself at home. Over time, the side effects of vagus nerve stimulation often get better. Your healthcare provider can adjust the setting on your device to reduce the side effects. You will need to have regular checkups with your healthcare provider after the device is implanted. Thank you for using Explain.